everyone, it's Holly and in the last video talking about transportation at Disney World, I wanted to briefly touch on some other forms of transportation. So let's get started. First, may not feel like a form of transportation, but it is in my book and that is walking. <laughs> So you can't walk everywhere on Disney property, but there actually are a few parks that you can walk to. You actually can walk to three of the four, depending on where you're coming from. So Magic Kingdom, you can walk to from directly from the Grand Floridian or the Contemporary. And technically there is a walkway between the Grand Floridian and the Polynesian. So you can walk from the Polynesian all the way to the Magic Kingdom. The walk from the Contemporary to the Magic Kingdom is about 10 minutes. It's not that bad in my opinion. And I know like at the end of the night, it may sound like you don't want to do a long walk. And obviously it'll depend on you, your body, your party, all of those things. But for me, I would rather be moving than stopping and standing in a line. So I would rather walk back to my hotel and just be continuously walking for 10 minutes than standing in line waiting for like a monorail. But that's for me personally. The other two... Oh, the other two resorts you can walk to, or the other two parks you can walk to, are Epcot and Hollywood Studios. You can actually walk between the two of them. There's a walkway between the two of them. And you can get to both of them also from the Swan and Dolphin, Boardwalk, and the Yacht and Beach Club. I think it's about a mile walk between Epcot and Hollywood Studios, and part of it, especially the closer to Hollywood Studios part, has very little shade covering, so that's something to keep in mind. I've done it a few times. I don't think it's a bad walk, but it can definitely get a little toasty in the sun. <laughs> the last place you can walk to is Disney Springs, which you can actually walk to from Saratoga Springs. Uh, if you were trying to maybe take advantage of something like this, then I would recommend trying to get a room in the Congress Park area, which is preferred at Saratoga Springs. We actually did this in November and it worked out really well because we had tons of dinner reservations at Disney Springs so then we could just walk right back to our room or if we were spending time at another hotel at night after the parks had closed instead of having to worry about transportation we were able to just get on a bus to Disney Springs and then walk over to our hotel and for us that was really convenient. Another option is driving. So I think I said this before, I've never driven on Disney property. We rented a car twice, <laughs> um, once in our November trip and once in our January trip. We only had the car for a couple hours and that was only so that we could get off property to get COVID tests before returning to New York State. Um, <laughs> and that is like the extent of my experience. Now, as a little, little kid, we did drive down on two of my trips. So technically we had cars, but we always just parked them at the resort and then took Disney transportation everywhere. But it is an option. And I know there's tons of people who like to have their own cars and whether it be your own actual car that you own or a rental, but you're the one in charge of getting yourself places. For me personally, I don't even like driving in my personal life. So I definitely don't want to drive on vacation. But I completely uh, respect and appreciate people wanting that control. There is something to keep in mind when it comes to driving your own car is that you may have to pay to park at the parks or at a resort depending on your situation. Like there is resort parking fees now if you're staying at a hotel. Also with the parks, a lot of times your parking gets waived if you have an annual pass, but parking prices can add up. So it is something to keep in mind and if it's really worth it to bring your car or to rent a car. Alternatively, you can Uber, Lyft, get any other kind of taxi. This I have also actually never done. Um, I know tons of people do it. I believe at the resorts, they're just gonna pick you up and drop you off at the front like entrance where you would come in normally on like Magical Express or if you were just checking in. At the, at the parks, there are specific drop-offs for taxis, Uber, Lyft, um, pick up and drop off. You'll see signs uh, for them so that you can see where to go. And it definitely can be a convenient way to get around. Uh, it can be faster, cheaper, depending on what's available to you. Um, and the one thing I would say, even though I've never done this, is if you are looking to do something like a ride share, is I would highly recommend having like Uber and Lyft on your phone and kind of 
checking between them and seeing if one is doing something is cheaper than the other if you don't have a preference or seeing if one or the other has any kind of deal on them i know a lot of times you can get like a deal the first time you sign up and get a discount so that's something to consider as well finally now originally originally i was going to briefly mention this as a comment and a plea for Disney to bring something back. But I saw some pictures not that long ago on Instagram that it looks like it might be coming back. And that is the minivan. So the minivan was a Disney operated service, but it operated through the Lyft app and it was Disney drivers. So Disney, so the cars were driven by Disney cast members and they drove around minivans. They're really SUVs. I think they were Chevy, not a Tahoe, but like the one below a Tahoe, I think. Anyways, um, and it, cast members drove them and it is more expensive than, or it was more expensive than a regular Uber or Lyft, but you knew that you were getting a Disney cast member, although I generally think Uber and Lyft is pretty safe which one of the benefits about having a Disney cast member is that they are allowed to go backstage. Um, so when we went for Christmas a couple of years ago, Christmas and my 30th birthday, my dad and I actually went mini golfing on Christmas day and we took a minivan to go to the golf course and we took a minivan back and the minivan back, we were staying at Polynesian, which normally at the time, I think they've changed the layout. Now they were doing some construction the last time we were there. You would have to go through the Magic Kingdom gates. Well, on Christmas Day, you can you might be able to imagine that they were pretty busy. And so that would have sucked. We would have been stuck in that traffic. But because we were with a minivan, minivan driver, he was able to take us on some backstage roads and get us over to the Polynesian without having to make us wait. And that was very helpful. Also, the minivan drivers everyone I've ever had has been so nice, so friendly, and I cannot speak more highly of them. And they play Disney music. They always have um, a bunch of different phone chargers. So in case you want to charge your phone, the cars are always very clean. I'm sure Uber and Lyft are as well because the drivers are getting rated just like you're getting rated as a passenger. But for me, a minivan was just totally worth it. Now, every time I rode one, I was riding with my parents, and so we would split the cost of the minivan, so I'm sure that helps. But I know my dad and I both think that minivans are totally worth it. Would I take a minivan everywhere? No. I don't have that kind of money. But sometimes at the end of the night, and we have done this, you're just like done, and you don't want to do anything, and so we would call a minivan. This was a casualty last year. Nobody really knows what happened, if it died because of COVID, if it was going out anyways. I think I had heard rumors that maybe the contract with Chevy was ending. Who knows? But what I do know is I have seen pictures of the signs at the Uber and Lyft and Rideshare drop-off and pickup locations at different parks that also have signs now for minivans again. So... Hopefully, this means we're getting minivans back. I would be so happy. And like I said, I know some people think that they're too expensive. The thing is, is you don't have to take them. They're completely optional for you to use or to not use. But it's another option for you in your traveling journey. It also can be convenient if instead of having to like transfer buses or boats or monorails or some combination of all of those, you can just take a minivan directly to your location. Like we were at Epcot and had to get to Hoopty Doo Review. And yeah, we could have taken a bus to Fort Wilderness or gotten on the monorail to the TTC and then gone to Magic Kingdom, go to Fort Wilderness, all this. But instead, we just got a minivan and it was great. And because it is through the Lyft app, a lot of times, uh, at least this was the case before, if you were a first time Lyft user and you got a coupon, you could use that on your first minivan drive as well. And minivan, <clears throat> when you would go into the Lyft app, minivan would just be like one of the options for the vehicles that you were looking for. If you couldn't tell, I'm a huge fan of the minivans. <laughs> um, I'm a huge fan of walking too. Like walking where you can, when you can. 
I think it's fun you get to see different parts of Disney. So those are some other forms of transportation around the Walt Disney World Resort. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye! Thank you.